I was uh, one of the initial developers of the Oscar rubric. And as such, I organized a team to develop uh, the rubric and review. Part of that development process was reviewing 30 courses from different institutions in order to practice with the rubric. We learned a lot uh, before we released the rubric out to um, the SUNY system. And uh, since then, I've reviewed about 20, 30 courses. The Oscar rubric is non-evaluative. So unlike other rubrics, it, it does not generate a score and it uh, does not generate any kind of stamp of approval. It uh, really only generates <clears throat> a, uh, a list of things to improve. Being a faculty member helped me understand uh, some of the elements of the rubric when we were developing it and uh, at least some of, some of what I thought a rubric should have. And so there are a few things uh, <clears throat> sort of native to the Oscar rubric born from that faculty experience. One is to review a course sequentially. So um, in other words, the order of the standards on the rubric uh, try to follow the order of navigating a course from um, the opening module to the ending module. That may sound like a little piece, but in practice, in implementation, it's really important. It saves a lot of time. Secondly, what uh, I tried to riff off of uh, the Quality Matters rubric in regard to perspective. The, uh, in Quality Matters and in the Oscar rubric, both share a strategy for the reviewer to assume the role of a student who knows nothing about the content. The design was quite intentionally in Google, more or less a ubiquitous platform uh, that will be around for a long time and faculty already know how to use Google to a certain extent. They know how to share documents, they know how to control the privacy of a document. There is a website called Oscar.org that expands upon each and every standard in the Oscar rubric, uh, provides resources to make improvements vis-a-vis -vis each standard, and also has lots of different SUNY perspectives on each standard uh, via video. I took uh, the Oscar online training, and uh, luckily after that uh, was done a couple of years ago, I got some students who um, had some disabilities in my course when they take, took it online and uh, I was able to offer them the services they need just because I revised my course based on the uh, Oscar rubric. At that time when I was reading his email it was like a, two nights before I have to offer open the course to my students and at that time I thought Oh, okay, luckily I did the Oscar rubrics and did my course revision based on the rubrics so that now I don't need to worry about changing all the materials um, to make it accessible for the, this particular student. And that's one of the great things about the rubric is that you can modify it. If something doesn't apply or if a policy or school doesn't allow you to look at that part of the course, um, you just take it out and and do what you need, you know, use it the way you would use it to best suit your faculty. One of the things that has been really nice that SUNY has done for us, or I guess it was Dave or Dan, um, they added uh, a content reviewer tab to our Oscar, Oscar rubric. So the normal rubric just is like design and interaction, but we wanted um, somebody to review content because that has, was a uh, important for us on the campus and we the instructional designers are not experts in all of their content so part of the teaching online certification program is that a faculty member either the chair or another faculty member reviews the content of the course to make sure that it matches with um, the course learning objectives so we love that and they even have it tracked in the dashboard for us, so we it, it's just part of the whole process. What uh, Open SUNY has intentionally um, allowed for is different campus cultures to use uh, the Oscar rubric and 
uh, and to develop their own course development, uh, sorry, course revision processes. So on, uh, I described uh, at Herkimer Community College, there is a um, campus-wide commitment to course reviews. At Broome Community College, they have conducted brown bag sessions around one standard every week. So every Friday, faculty who are interested in a particular standard will come and talk about how that standard manifests itself in uh, their courses or doesn't. Um, and we have everything in between. So um, for the most part across SUNY, there's been a strong adoption of, of the Oscar rubric uh, as a self-assessment instrument. So faculty using it as a checklist for uh, course development. At Monroe Community College, it has been formalized as the checklist for course development. And uh, they've done a fantastic job of um, creating milestones uh, during the course development process to um, reach each and every standard, or at least to address every standard on the Oscar rubric. So there's been a lot of different approaches to implementing the rubric um, across SUNY.